Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, December 12, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I am recording from Washington, D.C. This weekend, Brad came across some malware that tricks the user into installing a crypto coin miner on systems. This is actually not really using an exploit. It just arrives claiming to be a viewer for pornographic images and then tricks the user into installing the software. I've mentioned a few times already that as the value of these crypto coins goes up, this really becomes the new way how the bad guys are monetizing their skills. We see less things like crypto ransomware, even though they're still out there, or things like installing just bots on systems. These crypto coin miners are really a much more efficient way right now how bad guys can make money using your resources. Sources. And if you're a user of Microsoft's ERP software, also known as Microsoft Dynamics, then you probably heard that this software is now also available in a software as a service offering, where essentially Microsoft does deploy this software in Azure for you and you get control over the software remotely. Now, in order to accomplish this, Microsoft actually sets up three different tiers for their customers. One one for development, one for integration, and finally, one for sort of the live production service. For the development side, the customer actually has full RDP access to the virtual machine. One developer, Matthias Klicka, uh, actually took uh, this RDP service uh, to look a little bit around the machine. And uh, what he realized was that all of these development or sandbox machines, regardless of the customer, are sharing the same wildcard certificate. This is asterisk.sandbox.operations.dynamics.com. So what this means is via RDP access, it was pretty trivial to extract the secret key that goes with the certificate and Matthias now would have been able to impersonate arbitrary hosts within this infrastructure. Now for the life system, actually Microsoft did exactly the same thing. They are using a wildcard certificate. Extracting the secret key isn't quite as straightforward in this particular case because Microsoft doesn't give RDP access to those life environments. However, remember with ERP and all the SQL Server and stuff like this that goes with it, the customer is actually able to install code on these systems. And there's certainly a way, even though Matthias apparently didn't explore this, how a customer could extract the wildcard certificate and then impersonate other customers' sites. This isn't really sort of the worst part of it. Uh, what I think was really quite bad that it took Matthias quite a while to actually get a meaningful response out of Microsoft. Took him more than 100 days to actually get a meaningful response and even then the certificate wasn't immediately replaced. The issue was first reported mid-August and the certificates were just revoked early December. Now, and attackers that are scanning the internet for vulnerable devices and then are trying to exploit them, uh, they're trying to get some anonymity either by routing their traffic through systems like Tor or by be building their own proxy networks. One of them is known as Proxy M, and Dr. Webb, the antivirus company, has an interesting and brief write up about recent changes in the traffic observed from Proxy M. Proxy M essentially uses standard exploits to break into Linux devices and then turns them into SOX proxies. SOX, of course, allows you to proxy pretty much any TCP-based protocol. And with that, they have been used for a variety of different attacks. More recently, as of early December, Dr. Webb has observed how these botnets are, or these proxies are now being used more and more in order to scan web applications for vulnerabilities like SQL injection, cross-site scripting, 
and others. Not particularly new and we have certainly seen botnets like this before. This particular botnet is a few 10,000 hosts strong, probably strong enough uh, to be very efficient in obfuscating attacks and making them difficult to trace back. And a few months ago, the Shadow Brokers published a collection of software that had a tool included that allows you to edit Windows logs. This particular tool, Event Log Edit, doesn't actually remove the Windows log entry it's trying to hide. Instead, it just removes references to it. So it's a little bit like deleting a file and just deleting the directory entry, but not the file itself. Fox IT now came up with a tool that allows you to recover those hidden log entries and with that first of all detect that someone tampered with the log but also read whatever log entries were attempted to be hidden. So if you're running into a case where you suspect that a tool like event log edit was used to manipulate the logs you may want to take a look at this open source tool and see if you can find any more evidence or if you can even be able to recover these logs. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.